cataractcoach.com talking about management of iris prolapse during cataract surgery. Let me show you. This is a resident case that's done where the capsule has been stained with tripan blue dye. A nice continuous curvilinear capsule rexus has been made. It's probably about a four millimeter pupil and the rexus is about five millimeters. So beautiful job there. Watch what happens with hydrodissection. A fluid wave, no decompression, another fluid wave, a little decompression, another fluid wave, and watch for it. Look at the incision. Here's the hydrodissection. Too much fluid being put back there, causing a pressure gradient, right? If the pressure is higher behind the iris than it is in front, look at that. It prolapses out of the eye. That's iris prolapse. How do we fix it? Well, this is the wrong way of just pushing it back in the eye. It's not going to do it. That's better. You have to decompress Equalize the pressure between the posterior chamber and anterior chamber. And you can see here we're getting the nucleus up partly through the pupil, putting viscoelastic underneath it. That's going to help hold the iris at bay. So again, remember, we had iris prolos because the pressure behind the iris was higher than the pressure in front of the iris. And that's from this eye having trapped bound salt solution in the capsular bag. So when the iris prolapses out of the eye, you can't simply push the iris back in the eye. If you want to equalize the pressure gradient, you could put viscoelastic in front of the iris, but that just makes high pressure behind the iris matched by the high pressure in front of the iris by the viscoelastic. Now, there's a better way. Lower the pressure behind the iris. So decompress it. Go inside the eye, push the posterior lip of the iris and posterior lip of the incision towards the floor of the room, posteriorly. And that's going to help release that pressure that's behind the iris. Nice and easy. Once the pressure gradient is released, then the nucleus will want to be decompressed in the capsular bag, and the iris will want to go back inside the eye. And here, all we're doing now is once we got this nucleus, which is relatively soft, up partially in the iris plane, we can just use the chopper here to feed it into the probe and then just beautifully phaco aspirate it. Now, if you're wondering why that phaco chopper is on the right side of the screen, it's because I'm helping the resident. The resident's holding the phaco probe. I'm using the chopper there to help. So there we go, nicely removed. That looks great. So now the eyes a fake egg, just some lens cortex material remaining, and you can see the iris is starting to prolapse a little bit again. And we can again fix this by just equalizing that pressure gradient. Now we'll put the eye a probe in the eye. Look how we're doing it with a bimanual approach. That's the transformer eye handpiece, and we're using the infusion via the main incision in the right hand, and we're using the aspiration with the left hand via the paracentesis. Now, the advantage here is the infusion, the force pressure, is going to go inside the eye on top of the iris. See, because the right hand and the main incision has the infusion ports above the iris, while the aspirator tip can go underneath the iris in the capsular bag. This will also help prevent iris prolapse. You could do it with coaxial IA, but the issue there with coaxial is you're going to infuse the fluid underneath the iris as well, so you really have to be careful not to induce more iris prolapse. So now switching hands, now the left hand is going to hold the IA tip, the infusion in the main incision, and the right hand now goes via the other paracentesis to use the aspirator to remove the remainder of the lens cortex. So again, going 360 here, important to get underneath the anterior lens capsule to get towards the lens equator to really clean this up nicely. We don't want to have any retained lens material or lens fragments inside the eye. So that looks great. And as we go back inside the eye now, we're going to deliver our lens. We've already filled the capsule bag with our viscoelastic. Just fast forward it here. So there's the lens. Now we want to make sure it's nice and deep so it's really deep in the anterior chamber and the bag. That viscoelastic is also pushing the iris, that subincisional, out of the way. We want to avoid touching that with the eye well. So there's delivering the lens. Make sure it goes into the capsule bag. Now, there's a little twist there. We want to twist the other way. Let's get our second instrument or our chopper and put that lens in the capsule bag. So let's get that lens down. 
in the caps or bag and have both haptics open up. That looks great. And now you can see that six millimeter optic certainly looks pretty big inside this small eye and this small dilation. That's certainly about a four millimeter pupil. Now using the iris push pull to go and lift the iris up in various meridians, we want to make sure there's no lens material that's remaining like cortex or nuclear chunks. And also we want to ensure that the optic and both haptics are securely both within the capsule bag. That's very important. You don't want to have one haptic of this single piece lens in the sulcus. That would cause a lot of issues and UGH syndrome and require repositioning or even explant. So search around, make sure everything looks great, and then we could finish up this case. So summary here for resolving iris prolapse. Remember, the iris prolapses in response to a pressure gradient. If the pressure is higher behind the iris than in front of it, it'll want to prolapse out. So my recommendation is to release the pressure from behind the iris, and that will help you solve iris prolapse every time.